How's it going everybody? My name is Dion and welcome to a new segment on my channel called Dion's Disney Corner. So everybody that knows me personally knows that I am a die-hard Disney fan. I always have been, I always will be. I watch Disney movies all the time, I try to visit the Disney parks as often as I can even though I'm all the way here in Canada. And in most of my downtime you can find me on YouTube watching Disney related YouTube channels. Whether it's channels that showcase the parades and the fireworks and the shows at the Disney parks or just vloggers that love to go to the Disney parks, I am watching it every night. And even on my own channel, I've done videos talking about my Disney obsession, or going to Disney World on my travel blogs. I showcase it whenever I can. Last night, I went to the movies and I saw the latest Disney Pixar film, Coco, and it inspired me to start doing Disney videos on my channel again. So this show that I am calling Dion's Disney Corner is obviously going to be all about Disney, and it's going to be a variety of things, whether I'm reviewing movies from Disney that I've watched, or talking about the Disney parks, or just pretty much anything Disney related, I am going to be talking about it on this show. And if you are a Disney fan, I suggest you subscribe and stay tuned. So today I will be reviewing Disney's and Pixar's Coco, which is honestly such an amazing movie, such a tearjerker, such a great story, and honestly, it took everything I had not to cry in the theater. So obviously I don't really want to spoil the movie for anyone, so I'm just going to talk about my thoughts and feelings about the movie and talk about the main plots without revealing too much of the story itself. But basically what this story is about is a young boy named Miguel Rivera and he is passionately in love with music and he unfortunately is in a family that does not like music. They are the only family where they live that does not like music. So the reason why that is, is there was this woman many generations back named Imelda who had a husband that was a musician and he left her and her daughter behind to pursue his career. She never seen her husband again and she decided to take initiative and start a shoe business so that she could raise her daughter and generations of the family to come with nothing but the business. No music was allowed in that house for generations upon generations. Now Miguel, the youngest in the family, he adores music. He is the only one in his family that likes music. Now Miguel's biggest hero was this musician named Ernesto de la Cruz. Ernesto was his biggest hero. Ernesto influenced Miguel to pick up the guitar and learn how to play it, but he had to play it in secret because of his family. But Miguel feared playing guitar in front of people because, well, his family would kill him. Maybe not kill him, probably disown him. In fact, when they discovered that Miguel had a guitar, his grandmother destroyed that guitar. Miguel soon discovers that his great-grandfather just may be Ernesto de la Cruz himself. So he goes to Ernesto's grave to borrow Ernesto's guitar for the talent competition. Now he happened to do so on the Day of the Dead and that is very important to Mexican culture. It is a day where families celebrate those who have passed on and the people that passed on are able to cross over and just hang out with their families though they can't really see them. And when Miguel tried to steal Ernesto's guitar, it put him in a bit of limbo where he was not quite dead, but not quite alive. The people that are living cannot see him, but the people that are dead that are crossing over can, including members of his past family. Now members of that past family take him back to the land of the dead because there is a problem with one of their relatives who cannot get through. Now Miguel learns that the only way that he can go back to the land of the living is to have his past family's blessing to do so. Now his past family are willing to do that as long as Miguel promises to never play music again. So Miguel realizes that the only way he'll be able to go back to the land of the living and still pursue his music career is if he gets Ernesto's blessing himself. Now on his journey, Miguel meets a man named Hector who is also a fellow musician who happens to know Ernesto. Now Hector himself is on the verge of being forgotten by his own family in the land of the living. So the two of them make a bit of a trade. If Hector can get Miguel to Ernesto, he will bring that photo back to the land of the living and help his family remember him. And that, my friends, is where the story begins. Now I have to say that for me, the story right from the get-go hit me in the feels because I love music. I'm a bit of a musician myself. I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst. Now, if my family told me that I could not listen to music or play music, I would be so angry. And so right off the get-go, my heart broke for that kid. So really, in the first 10 minutes of that movie, I was already an emotional wreck, even before he even got to the land of the dead, okay? And on top of that, watching this boy take a wild journey to meet his hero was just 
very emotional. I mean, really, it's a story of watching a boy try desperately to pursue his dream. I mean, this boy was willing to risk his life to become a musician. Basically, if this boy did not get out of the land of the dead before sunrise, he would be stuck there forever. So this was literally a life and death situation for this kid. So basically, the entire time, I was just in awe at the lengths that this kid was willing to go through just to pursue his dream. On top of all the amazing animation and the beautiful music that was playing throughout the whole movie, I was a wreck! And like I said, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but there are so many crazy plot twists throughout that movie that just make you go into shock that it's just hard not to get emotionally invested into it. I mean, this movie itself teaches people not to let go of their dreams, and it also teaches you the importance of your family and how important it is to not forget them. So for me personally, it really hit home on, you know, family members that are getting older and how important it is to just be there for them while they're here and to not forget them when they pass on, as well as not forgetting your dreams. And if that kind of plot doesn't make for a great Disney film, I don't know what will. I mean, there's so many good reasons to watch this movie beyond the soundtrack, the amazing animation, the story, just just the colors and the special effects. It's, it's just worth watching, you guys. It is truly the best Disney movie I have seen in such a long time. I love all the Disney movies, but this one really, really got into the feel goods for me, so I totally recommend it. But you know, just be prepared to become an emotional wreck because it's an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. Especially if you are a fan of music, especially if you are close to your family, and especially if you're a big old softie like me. Let me tell you, if you are on the fence about seeing this movie, jump over that fence, okay? Like, you need to see it. It is so, so amazing. Like, by the end of it, I was just there, like, in my 3D glasses, and my mom was beside me. I was watching it with her. And I just sat there and I was just like, wow, it was so good. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here so that I'm not crying on camera myself. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. And you can subscribe if you want to. I am going to do these Disney videos as often as I can. Again, I don't exactly have a game plan, but I love Disney and I plan on making it a prominent focus on my channel. So yeah, you know, like it, subscribe it, and join me. I will catch you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching! Tune in next time for my review of the short film that played before Coco, Olaf's Frozen Adventure! Urgh.